guys, it's Danielle with Demade Crochet. Welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to do a super duper easy hair scrunchie. I love this pattern. It is three rows if you're using one color. Um, of course, you know, whatever colors you want to use is up to you. But it's a three row pattern. It's really, really simple. It's very beginner friendly. And apparently scrunchies are in right now. Uh, I know they were in when I was a kid back in the 90s. But apparently they're in again. So um, I like to take scrap yarn and make scrunchies like on road trips or if I'm just going somewhere for like a day trip. They're really easy. Um, you can use any kind of yarn with these that you want. Uh, I've made some with glitter in them before with, you know, yarn that has sequins in it. Um, so anyway, let's just go ahead and get into it. So what you are going to need, you are going to need a crochet hook. It can be any size hook between J, I'm sorry, between G and J, the thing is the the first row is going to, you're going to have to do more crochets um, the bigger your hook is, or I'm so, sorry, the smaller your hook is because you want to um, make sure that the hairband is completely covered. I'm using this gorgeous, 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 amazing hook I just got yesterday. It is by Furls, so that's spelled F as in Foxtrot, U. R L S is in Sierra. Um, so that's Furls Crochet. I think that, that the, their website is furlsfiberarts.com. I think. I'm not sure, but this is a size I. You guys, this is my new favorite hook. It is really well balanced in the weight area. I can hold it comfortably and still have enough space to feel the stitches that I'm working um, at the tip of the hook because, as you know, I can't see, so feeling the stitches is super important. The handle is this really awesome peach color, which I wasn't sure about when I ordered it because the peach looked more orange, but I like peach, so I thought I'd give it a chance, and I'm so happy I did. This one is nickel. The hood head of the hook is nickel, but they also have rose gold plated and gold plated. Um, this one was $33, and the ones with the gold heads are $66, and then they have other hooks that are made out of really gorgeous exotic woods. They're handmade. I can't say enough good things about this one. I'm obsessed with it, so I'm using it for everything. <laughs> anyway, so you're going to need a hook. Mine, Like I said, mine's an eye hook. You are going to need an elastic, a hair elastic. I think this one's by Goody. Um, and preferably the ones without the metal, the little metal pieces on the, uh, like where they connect. Uh, so it's just a, a standard size. Of course, you can do a jumbo hair tie, kind of whatever, whatever kind of hair tie that you have. You're going to need your yarn. This is just some scrap cotton yarn that I used for a shawl I made. It's just leftover. You're not going to need more than 100 yards of yarn. And, and even then, that's probably too much. I'd even say like 50 yards. Or, yeah, 50 yards. So this is just some blue cotton yarn. Um, and then a yarn needle. Uh, oh, and some scissors. Which, here's my scissors. And I wanted to tell you guys like what weight this yarn was and I didn't remember because I lost the wrapper but I have this handy dandy um yarn gauge finder thingy that I got on crochet.com so I thought we would give it a try it looks like this is maybe um I can't I can't really read what it says. It's got print on it, but I want to say this is a three-weight yarn. So let's just move it around. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that this is a DK or um, a size three. Oh yeah, look, that's perfect. It's the third one in. Cool. So um, I did a little overview of this thing when I got the when I did the uh, crochet.com haul um but for those who can't see it's a little wooden square and it's got tactile grooves kind of I don't want to say carved into it because they're not holes but they're little grooves and they are the thickness of uh different yarn weights and so it goes all the way from super fine all the way up to I believe jumbo uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
I think that there's one in here for Aaron. It's it, anyway, it's got eight different weights of yarn and you just would lay your strand of yarn over these grooves and then whichever strand fit, then you would know, okay, it's a three or um, what have you. I think this was three bucks at crochet.com. Super handy. It's got a little keychain thingy on it. Um, but I like it for just instances like this where I forget what uh, yarn weight something is. So anyway, we'll go ahead and get started. So we're going to do a slip knot. Okay, now I have a slip knot on my hook. Let's get it on, or now I have it on my hook. Wait a sec. Okay, I realized I didn't verbally say what we were doing with the slip knot, so my bad. And I don't, I'm not that good at editing videos yet to figure out like how to cut little pieces out. So that mistake is going to be in there. I'm sorry, I'm trying. All right, so to make a slip knot, you are going to take the tail end of your yarn. Remember, leave at least a three inch tail. You're going to wrap it around your, uh, if you are right handed as I am, you're going to wrap it around your pointer and ring finger on your left hand once and then make an X over the back of those two fingers then you're going to just take the yarn that's closest to your arm pull it under the loop that's closest to your fingernails take your fingers out pull tight and then you want to just pull it tight around the neck of your crochet hook. I do have a video closer to the beginning of my uh, YouTube. I want to say it's even the first video, maybe first or second for sure, uh, that I where I go over a slip knot really uh, slowly. So you can check that out if you want. Also, we are now on Instagram, and by we I say I. So if you want to follow D Made Crochet on Instagram, it's the same as it's spelled with the channel D M A D E. C R O C H E T, and I have a knot in my yarn. So we're going to do this again. Okay, so we are going to pull another three inch ish, a little bit longer tail, wind my yarn around my pointer and middle finger, wind it around again, make an X on the back of my fingers. And then on your middle finger, you're going to take the loop that's closer to your arm, pull it under the loop that's closer to your fingernail, drop your fingers out. You want to pull like both strands, so the working end of your yarn and your tail end, you want to pull them tight. Not so tight that the knot comes out, but tight enough to where you can kind of slip your hook in and then tighten them around the neck of your hook. All right, we are slip knotted. All right, so now with your hair tie. Take your time, this might take a little while to get used to, it certainly took me a little bit, but your hair tie is gonna act like your foundation row, or yeah, your chain row, or row of chains. So you're not gonna chain anything. What you're gonna do is you're going to start single crocheting around the hairband. So your hairband, again, is acting like that row of chains that you would do when you are starting a crochet project. I know some people make their hair ties or their scrunchy, crochet scrunchies without a hair tie. Uh, I prefer to do the hair tie and I've also seen some people do a double hair tie in case your hair tie breaks, which that's a really good idea. I know mine breaks sometimes when, when I'm putting them in my hair, but um, so for today, I'm just gonna show you um, with one hair tie. Okay, so you've got your slip knot on hook. What you're going to do is you're going to put your hook into the center of that hair tie. Yarn over and you're gonna, so when you yarn over, you're going to have the hair, the slip knot on your hook, the hair tie, and then that yarn over you just did. Pull through, and when I say pull through, I mean pull out of that center, so pull under the hair tie. Okay, so now on your hook, your yarn is now attached to your hair tie and you have two loops on hook, okay? Yarn over again, um, and when you're yarning over again, you're not incorporating this uh, hair tie again, it's just the yarn, because the, the yarn is already attached to the hair tie. So now you should have three loops on hook, 
and then you want to pull through all of them and for this I don't hold my yarn like I normally do when I get started with the hair tie I just kind of grab it however I can um, just because it's easier especially getting that very first stitch on the hair tie everything else kind of happens in rhythm once you get the yarn on your hair tie but it's just this first few stitches all right we're doing this again so what I have on my hook right now is just the working loop okay I'm putting so then I am putting my hook into the center of the hair tie essentially think of this as you know that foundation chain right so you put the crochet hook into the center of your hair tie you want to yarn over so now what's on your hook is the working loop the hair tie and the yarn over you just did pull through so now you've your hair tie is connected to the yarn and it's off your hook you have two loops left on hook uh yarn over you have three loops left on hook and then you just want to pull through everything don't lose your slip knot like i just did or your working yarn all right so let's do it again okay working loop on hook going into the middle of the hair tie yarn over pull through you should have two loops of yarn on your hook yarn over three loops on hook pull through all three and you know uh, so on screen I'm having a little bit of trouble getting this um, started and that's really common for me uh, I just I struggle with this piece of it and sometimes I have to start all the way back over but once you get a few single crochets around this hairband it becomes so much easier to work with it's just especially because my yarn is thinner than the um, hairband so I'm just having a little trouble feeling it but that's okay Let's do a couple more. So I have the working loop on my hook. Okay, I'm going into the middle of the hair tie. What's on my hook right now is the working loop and the hair tie. The hair tie being closer to the head of the hook. Yarn over. So now I have three loops on hook. I have the working loop, the hair tie, and then the latest yarn over. Pull through two. And so now you are left with just the two loops of yarn on your hook. Yarn over. You have three left on hook and then you're going to pull through everything. So what we want to do is we want to single crochet around the entire hair tie, but not just, not just, you know, a few single crochets and then, um, leave the, how am I trying to say this? What you want to do is single crochet enough times around so that the entire hair band is covered. So for example, my hair band is black. And then my yarn is blue, so I want to see no black peeking out. Now, I will say, remember that these hair bands expand. So if you want to single crochet and go all the way around and then kind of stretch your hair band a little bit to see if there's any gaps. Um, so just make sure that the whole hair band is covered and then I will meet you back here for row two. All right, I am coming up to the end of this first round of single crochets so what I've been doing is as I've been single crocheting I've been pushing the stitches over to make more room so it might feel like your stitches are bunched up that's okay that's kind of what you want because again you don't want any of the actual hair band showing Okay, so we're just still crocheting around the hairband. I'm going to do maybe two more stitches. So I have just a little tiny bit of the hairband still showing. So I think two more stitches should do it. There's one more.
and two more. Okay, so I've made it all the way back around to the beginning and none of my hairband is showing and your stitches because you're making you have made so many around the hairband um they're gonna feel a little bit ruffled so but that's okay that's what you want you want them to feel a little bit um not flat okay so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna slip stitch into the first stitch that we made so uh, again, all a slip stitch is, is you put your hook into the first stitch you made. All right, let's see. There we go. And then you yarn over and pull through everything on your hook. Okay. Now you want to chain one. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put one, I'm sorry, two half double crochets in each single crochet. So instead of going one for one, so one stitch in every stitch, you're doing two stitches in every stitch. This is called an increase. Um, so when you're making patterns, for example, a triangle shawl, you're going to work in increases. Anytime that you're working in the round and you're going to make a hat or something like that, you're going to work in increases as well. And so an increase is when you're doing more than one stitch in the stitch below it. So in this case, we're going to do two double crochets for every in every single crochet. Okay, so to do the double crochet, you're going to yarn over, go into the next stitch over. So what you've got on your hook is your working loop, your yarn over, and then the two legs of the V of that double, or I'm sorry, of that single crochet. You're going to yarn over again. Pull through the first two loops on hook, yarn over again, pull through everything. So now, he, like normally you would go into the next stitch, but because we're increasing, we're going into the same stitch we just worked in. So yarn over, put into the same single crochet we just worked in. So you're going to go right next door to that half double we just made. So what's on your hook now is that working loop, the first yarn over you did the two legs of the V and then you're going to yarn over again. So you should have, it looks like five loops, but you're going to have four loops on your hook because those two legs of the V count as one loop. You're going to pull through the first two. And when I say the first two, I mean the, the last yarn over you did and the two legs of the V. You're going to yarn over again, pull through everything. Okay, now you've done two half doubles in that first single crochet. So on to the next. You're going to do one half double and a second half double. Okay, let's do this again. So in the third stitch, and it's pretty easy to feel where these stitches are because that hairband is stiff enough to where you can feel, you can feel that there's those little ruffly pieces on top of that hairband and you would just feel for those v's um your yarn might be thicker than mine and then in that case it would be easier to feel my yarn is that dk that three weight yarn so it's not the thickest um but you can do these with any sort of yarn that you want um obviously a bulky or a jumbo yarn is going to take way less work um, and then a lighter, finer yarn is going to take more work, but either way. And now on this, I will say that this is a super forgiving pattern. So let's say, for example, you accidentally skip one of the half doubles and you only end up putting one in the single crochet. It's not going to make your pattern fall apart. It's not going to hurt the size of anything. Same thing if you're working in a single crochet and you accidentally put three half doubles in it. It's not going to hurt anything. It's not going to mess anything up. Um, it's pretty, it's very forgiving. Um, and you'll be able to feel as you go along, you'll, your fingers will get more comfortable with feeling where those single crochets are and where you're going to put in your half doubles. So what's happening here now is... 
if you feel, if you take out your hook and you use both hands and you're feeling where you've done all these half doubles, you're going to feel that there's like a zigzag effect. So it'll go up and then it'll go down. That's what we want. We want it to have that wavy effect. We don't want it to just be flat. Okay. Uh, because scrunchies, you know, they have that sort of curly cue uh, look to them and it's the same thing that we want. So if you feel that your stitches are kind of dipping and then going up, you know, going up and down, that's normal. That's what you want. So go ahead and do half, two half double crochets in each single crochet around and then I will meet you back here for row three. All right, so I'm coming to the end of the row of the half double crochets and this is what it's looking like. And again, it's going to have that zigzag feel to it because we increased. So we did two half double crochets in each single crochet from the row before. So I've got a couple more stitches to do. And then we'll be on the third row. So the third row, if you are working your scrunchie in a variegated yarn or if you just want to keep it a solid color, the third row is where you'll end. And then if you wanted to make it in two colors, you would have a fourth row to do just based on my pattern. So one more half double right here at the last stitch. And now we're going to slip stitch into the first half double we did. I lost my loop here. all right so here again is what we're looking at now and if you wanted a thinner sort of um scrunchie like if it's maybe for someone who has um you know finer hair and you don't want it to be so big um you could actually stop here at this row and it would be fine so then what you would do is just fasten off weave in your ends and you'd be done um, but if you want it to be one of the bigger, more, um, I guess, traditional scrunchies, you're going to want to do at least one more row. So uh, once we've slipped, slip stitched, we're going to chain one. And the cool thing with this too is you don't have to turn your work. It's not something that's going to take you long. I think when I started this one, um, maybe 30 minutes have gone through, um, you know, after I've turned off the camera and just worked it. So it's really not hard. So, okay, and the other thing is size doesn't matter. The only thing that matters really is just how big and um, poofy you want to make your scrunchie. All right, so then now what we're going to do is we're going to do increasing again. We're going to put two double crochets in each one of those half double crochets. So remember that a double crochet is where you are going to yarn over, go under the V of that half double crochet, so now what's on your hook is the working loop, that first yarn over you did, and then the two legs of the V of the half double crochet. You're going to yarn over again, pull through two, yarn over again, pull through three, yarn over again, pull through the last two. So you're going to do two double crochets in each half double crochet. And this row to me is the easiest row because the half the or i'm sorry the double crochets are the your bigger stitch so these tend to go really fast so again let me do that one more time with you and then i will leave you to this row all right so i have the working loop of yarn on my hook and then i have the first yarn over i did i'm going into the under the v so the two legs of the v of the half double so what's on my hook so far from closest to the handle i have the working loop then the first yarn over then the two legs of the v that the two legs are going to look like there's two loops, but it's not. You're just going under both legs of the V. You're going to yarn over again. You're going to pull through two. Now you've got three loops on hook. You're going to yarn over again. You've got four loops on hook. Pull through the two closest to the head of the hook. Now you've got two loops left on hook. Yarn over. Pull through everything. One more time. So you're going to yarn over and then put it under the two legs of the v of that half double and remember you're working the same half double you were just in yarn over pull through two 
you have three left on hook, yarn over, and you're going to pull through three, yarn over, pull through two. And then now you're just left with a working loop. So this is going to be taller than what it was with the half doubles because just by nature a double crochet is going to be taller you're still going to get that zigzag effect that you had in the half doubles so i'm going to go ahead and work around this row and i will meet you back at the end all right dudes i am at the end of my uh row of double crochets i'm trying to figure out if there's a way to lighten this up because i lost a lot of i was recording at dusk earlier and dusk is gone so i'm sorry if this is a little bit dark um so i'm doing i just have two more half or i'm sorry two more double crochets to do to get back to the beginning so here we go there's one and two Okay, so now all that's left to do is to slip stitch into that first double crochet that you did. Um, let's see. Come on, buddy. Oops. Yeah. All right. And honestly, this is the first scrunchie I've done in a light worsted or a um, DK weight yarn and I don't think that I would do it again it was a little bit more work to get that smaller yarn to uh, go where I wanted it to go it could also just be because I need practice but I think I would rather just use up worsted for this but this is a cotton so anyway just thought I'd share that so okay I have uh, finished off the scrunchie itself now I just have to weave in my ends so I am going to grab my yarn needle and the way that I do this weaving in piece is so I fold the yarn in half or the tail in half and then I put the folded piece through the eye of my yarn needle and then I pull through um, that's just, I don't, I don't know, to be honest with you, like if that's the common way to do it or not, but that's just how I, I always do it and I find it easier to do. And then also if your yarn is thicker than the eye of your, uh, yarn needle, it helps to like twist the yarn a little bit just to kind of make that the end or the, um, folded piece a little bit skinnier. Um, so I'm just weaving this yarn tail in back and forth and you can kind of go different directions I like to do like four or five one direction and then a couple on in the other direction and then I snip it off um, so that's I'm about done with this one I've got maybe one more to go Okay, so then I'm going to cut it pretty close to the scrunchie without cutting stitches because I've done that before and that's heartbreaking. Okay, this one's done. So then all I have to do is weave or cut, yeah, weave in this, the beginning tail that I started with. So again, I'm folding my yarn and I am... pulling it through the eye and then with this tail you can just weave it in and weave it in and out of the single crochets you did and if you get a little bit of pushback from the yarn if you're like breaking some of the fibers in there that's okay it's okay to break some of the fibers um it actually gives you a little bit more of a secure hold because you're um kind of forcing your way through the the plies of the yarn if you will um, I don't recommend like, you know, intentionally looking for those, you know, to break your yarn because you might end up breaking it so much that you create a hole. But just every once in a while, if you do end up breaking through a fiber, that's fine. Um, okay, I lost my, there it goes. I had to re, what is it? Re-thread my needle. I think that's how they say it. 
All right, so just a couple more stitches. One, and then I'm going back through. All right, and then I'm gonna cut this as well. So that's done. So this is the finished scrunchie. Um, you know, again, really, really easy to do. Um, you're practicing your increases. I will do another video eventually with increase and decrease. Now, this is all one color. This is, you know, just uh, blue. But I, so, uh, oh, and this is the purple one. I grabbed the wrong one. So if you did want to do it, so I did one in Green Bay Packers colors because I'm a Packer fan. And so what I did was I did that exact same pattern that we all just worked together, but then at the end I changed colors and I did a row of single crochets. So I did one single crochet in every double crochet. So I didn't increase, I just did a one-to-one. -one. So the majority of this is that dark green of the Packers colors and then the edging of it so that last row that fourth row of single crochets is in gold so I've done one like this before um, my cousin's school colors are blue and orange I've done a blue and orange I've done a Chicago Cubs where the middle row um, so I did the single crochets were red the half doubles were white and then the doubles were blue because the Cubs colors are red white and blue so um I think red, white, and blue. I'm pretty I don't know. I'm a Sox fan. No, I'm a Brewers fan and a Sox fan. Everybody but the Cubs. So, so anyway, um, that's what you could do this as well with, you know, two different colors. You could do a rainbow of colors. You can make it as big as you want, as small as you want. But anyway, there you have it. I hope you guys liked the video. Uh, if you have questions, feel free to let me know here on YouTube. Let me know on Instagram too. Again, the Instagram handle is Demade Crochet. So that's D M A D E C R O C H E T. Or you can email me at demadecrochet at gmail.com. I hope you guys have a great night and I will talk to you again soon. Bye.